Come home to Williamsport and Lycoming County. Discover for yourself the fascinating history, natural beauty, and exciting activities found in our area. Those who love to shop will find a fabulous array of the old and the new, from classic antiques to fine handcrafted jewelry and modern amenities in the quaint country shops, downtown boutiques, and modern malls. tonight at the Lycoming Mall near Williamsport, where plenty of people got out of bed early and lined up outside of stores. But in the last year, two of the mall's anchor stores have closed, and a third is on its way out. At the Lycoming Mall in central Pennsylvania, it's closing time for Sears, just like it was for its Macy's and J.C. Penney's last year. To lose anchors. Yes. That's big. It's big. It is a very big thing. Dina Miller has helped manage this mall for 30 years. She's seen the crowded corridors replaced by scattered, empty store spaces. I think it hurts because a lot of people like to go into the bigger stores because there's so much more of a selection. But what happens at a mall where all of its anchor stores have shut down? Well, that's the case of the Lycoming Mall. Shoppers walk through the Lycoming Mall near Muncie, shopping bags in hand, just like any other Black Friday. But it was hard not to notice this Black Friday was different. News 16 counted about 10 empty storefronts in the mall. There's almost nothing here anymore, so it's very limited. Um, and I think the people, there's far less people um, nowadays. It's almost really kind of sad. In the last two years, all four of the mall's anchor stores closed. That changed the dynamic of Black Friday for a lot of people. I'm missing all those stores. This is video from Black Friday at the Lycoming Mall two years ago, and this is from today. It's really a big change, but um, I mean, we still try. I wish people would come shop more, you know, even though the box stores are gone. There is a lot of little stores that, you know, people could shop at. Charlotte Power went out here at the Lycoming Mall around 1230 this afternoon. According to management at the Lycoming Mall, PPL had a problem with the main power line coming into the mall. But a spokesperson for PPL says that is not the case and that there are no current equipment or power failure issues in this area. Several mall tenants tell Newswatch 16 that the owner of the mall did not pay the electric bill. Came to go shopping and <laughs> mall's closed. The Lycoming Mall opened at 10 a.m., but a few businesses still had their gates down in the afternoon. The sign outside RB says opening late due to power failure yesterday. Power to the mall near Pensdale and nearby Big Lots was shut off for most of the day. Lycoming Mall could be auctioned to the highest bidder in a sheriff sale next month. According to the Lycoming County Water and Sewer Authority, the mall owes thousands in unpaid water and sewer bills. This has been going on for almost a whole year, back and forth. The Lycoming Mall still owes thousands of dollars in unpaid bills. Just today, the Water Sewer Authority received a partial payment for the unpaid bills. Yes, there's still a significant amount owed. We're not talking about hundreds of dollars, but thousands of dollars. Newswatch 16 spoke to Mike Cohen, the owner of the Lycoming Mall. He says, quote, we will make it happen. We will pay it in full in the upcoming month. If the owner of the mall here near Muncie pays back what is owed uh, by next month, they said they will cancel the sale that's scheduled right now for February 1st. Kristen Papa, Newswatch 16, reporting live here near Muncie. Using the main entrance to Lycoming Mall, you will drive under the Hadani Arch, a 140-ton steel arch built by sculptor Israel Hadani in 1977 for the new mall. 
Standing at 90 feet tall, it is one of the largest roadside sculptures in America. A good first impression begins upside when you notice the empty anchor stores. The original opening anchors were Sears, S's, and GB, which are all department stores. J.C. Penney's moved to the mall from their downtown location sometime in the 1980s, and in 1985, a $4.7 million expansion added Bonton. To date, the only anchor that has been filled since they all closed is the Sears section, which has converted to storage units in 2018. But enough of the outside, let's head in and take a look at how the mall's guts are doing. So far, standard dead mall feels. This is the former Penny's entrance to the left. Newswatch 16 has an outlet here too. I guess so they can report on the latest pratfall the mall has had. Seriously, of all the malls I have covered so far, Lycoming Mall has had the most news pieces done on it. Newswatch 16 Sneaky Cry stopped by the Lycoming Mall. Lycoming Mall. The Lycoming Mall. The Lycoming Mall. Lycoming Mall. The Mall. The Mall. The Mall. The Mall. The Mall. This end is almost completely dead. Finally, further in, there's some actual life. In fact, the center of the mall actually has a good amount of people that I almost forgot about the dead zone back there. Here, kids play, there's an active carousel, and you can even adopt pets. As mentioned in the intro, there were even celebrity appearances here back in the 80s with stars such as Margaret Clank from One Life to Live and Tony Danza. With its very retro looking facade, Burlington Coat Factory is the largest tenant that remains, having moved in in 2008 in place of Value City. But one does not need to look far to see the empty places. The mall was renovated in 1990, but the far end by the former Macy's still has a nice retro feel to it. Even though it has Dick's and Books A Million open down here, no one seems to be here. Books A Million opened in 2011 in place of Borders Books and Music, which had moved the mall in 2006 along with Dick's, Best Buy, and Old Navy that same year, making it the largest year since 1978. Things seemed to be looking up for a time. That is, until the mall was put for sale in 2015. It was purchased by Mike Cohan of Cohan Realty, a notorious dead mall company which owns 27 other such malls across the country. We're now heading into the last wing, which was built to add the former Bonton store. Something you may have noticed is the lack of a food court in this mall. 
Instead, there are a few eateries spread around the mall, such as this Arby's, accessible only via the concourse. Though Cohan paid enough to cancel the sheriff's auction in 2019, one year later in February 2020, the mall is at only roughly 60% occupancy in its 85 storefronts. After closing in response to COVID-19, the mall reopened on June 5th. However, it has lost the piercing pagoda, a kiosk which has been in the mall since it first opened in 1978. Victoria's Secret, PacSun, and Hot Topic have all announced their closure as of this year, leaving the future for our like homing's once community hotspot up in the air. Not like it used to be, that's for sure. Anything at this point, just keep them all alive. The weekends it's a little busier, but during the week it's pretty slow. A lot of people aren't in the stores like they used to be. I feel sorry for the people that worked at Macy's. Macy's, you know, they're out. We just always come here. It's our normal stores to go. The grandkids like the stores here. Things are moving out very fast. It's not good. I don't like the big stores moving out. I'm sad. I've shopped here since I was a kid, and I hate to see all the jobs lost. Man, your attention, please. The Lycoming Mall is now closed. Thank you for shopping at the Lycoming Mall. A lot of people say malls are dead. You say? I don't believe that. I don't want to believe that on a personal level, of course, but I also don't believe that. For Lycoming to survive, Miller says it must become the center of the community, not just a shopping destination. So you need to do something that draws the people out. And then, hopefully, their pocketbooks. Michelle Miller, CBS News, Pensdale, Pennsylvania.